Everyone, and welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel, joined by recurring guest Mike Giardi of the NFL Network here to give some perspective ahead of the Jets-Bills game this weekend. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe um, to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Mike, thanks for coming back on. Appreciate it as always. I know you're a busy guy. Well, you got over 20,000 subscribers, right? Did I see that? So congrats on no that. No big deal. Yeah, no big I deal. mean it, but yeah. I'm no big deal. You know, I'm, I'm only Dan. I just, you know, people come, they watch the show. No, it's, uh, it's always an honor to be here. Uh, looking forward to it as, as always. I, I know that you're a, 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 you know, a follower. I know you're a subscriber. I know you're, you're a big Buffalo plus guy. I mean, we talk all the time about, you know, how great the content is and everything. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I usually it's cause I, I will, I'll text you and tell you Catalana is, you know, there's, he, he brings the show down a little bit, but what, yeah. whatever. Well, it was funny. I texted them today saying, hey, I'm going to do uh, GRD at noon. And then Mike just responded with the text of like, awesome. You can do GRD. Yes. And I was like, go. that's it. That's it. He remembers. He remembers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Getting into this because you cover the entire, pretty much the entire AFC East for the NFL Network. Um, it's an interesting division in general. And maybe the most interesting team in it is the Jets because I feel like they can look so bad and have looked so bad this season. And still, if they were to find a win on Sunday, they're pretty much a half game back of the Bills and really in the thick of it. Like, what is the vibe of how good this team thinks they are? They think they're a playoff team. They think they're a, they're a real threat to come out of the AFC. That's the sort of the confidence that they've built in their team. And and obviously, the, the change in quarterback has been massive for them because, um, you know, Mike White's first game against Chicago was lights out. Chicago's yeah. defense is very poor, as, as we as we well know. Um, last week, terrible in the red zone, right? So it really kind of cost them the game. But the vibe around them is Mike is competent. And the, <laughs> the other guy, Zach Wilson, wasn't. And now you're seeing them sort of be able to unlock some of their weapons that for for seven weeks with Zach as the quarterback, you just – you didn't see it. And, you know, whether or not Zach can end up – finding his way back in the lineup either some point this year or, or next year. I don't know. Uh, I guess probably a lot will depend on how White plays going forward. But yeah. White is sort of giving them an extra jolt of confidence, like, hey, we're not going to be held in the single digits. Like, we can make plays with this guy at quarterback, whereas before we were just looking to not make mistakes and hoping our defense could keep it close. Yeah, I saw all the guys last week wearing the Mike White shirts. It seems like the transition from the number two overall pick to – a guy that we really didn't know anything about before last year has gone pretty smooth in that locker room. You heard Garrett Wilson after the game saying he'd go to war with Mike White. I mean, has this gone as well as a transition as, I don't know, like I said, you've been around the league long enough. Like when these moves happen, sometimes they seem to ruffle more feathers than smooth things out. Well, I think for I think for the Jets, it was any it was basically like if it had been Flacco, they probably would have felt the same way as in anybody but Zach at this point. Um, and again, like I don't, I don't think Zach's a bad kid. I just, he, he wasn't playing well. And it just, you know, obviously the regrettable comments after the Patriots game and then kind of taking two or three days before he came out and apologized for it. Like it, there, there were some faux pas there that, um, you know, probably cost him some, some cachet in that locker room. But to me, the white thing is interesting because we've seen this before. And he, maybe you're even seeing it with Washington right now, right? Where Heineke comes in and Heineke's not Wentz and he's taking more chances and Heineke gets McLaurin more involved. Whereas White's yeah. getting Garrett Wilson 15 targets in a game. And that's great. Like you want your playmakers to have the ball in their hands, but then there becomes a point where you remember, well, this is why this guy is just a guy. <laughs> and whether that happens this week or two weeks from now, or maybe it doesn't happen again until, you know, next season, maybe he holds on to the job, they get to the playoffs or whatever. And, and they ride with him going into next year. I don't know. But like, I think we've seen the ceiling on guys like this. Um, yeah. That generally you're not in the league for three, four years before you become a real guy, a plausible guy. I mean, Geno Smith, I guess would be your, you could throw that back at me, but that's one, you know, that happens once in a blue moon. Yeah. Uh, maybe Mike White becomes, twice in a blue moon, but I don't know. I, I think we'll have to see how this, this sort of manifests itself. Cause even, you know, last year coming in and giving them that big jolt and yep. then boom, you know, that he became Mike white again. So we'll see. Yeah. It's funny that that game that he took the world by storm, his jerseys in the hall of fame. Like that's how wide, like Mike white has memorabilia in the hall of fame. And 
Leslie Frazier talked about it yesterday. I know you were on the call um, about what he sees. It, it just seems like a confident, like a competent, confident quarterback that he says can actually like run the offense. Like, is that what we've seen the last two weeks of an NFL caliber offense compared to what the Jets were against New England per se for those two games? Without question. So look, I, I did both the Patriot Jets game. The first one was in MetLife and it was 22-17 was the final. It was kind of a garbage touchdown from the Jets late. Zach, I think, threw for over 300 yards, although again, a lot of that came late yeah. in the game. Um, but there were players coming off the field for the Jets that were grumbling about their quarterback then. Like, man, if he just made a few more plays, like, I was open. Like, And you saw there was frustration in that game. All the receivers at one point or another were throwing up their hands like, hey, I'm open or hey, uh, how did you miss me by five yards there? Um, and then the second time around where, look, I had just seen the Patriots play the Colts with Sam Ellinger. And that was, I said, the single worst offensive performance that I'd ever seen in my life. And it actually sort of masked how badly the Patriots played in that game offensively. Uh, because if you look at them and, and the numbers in that game are pretty hideous too. And then, you know, two weeks later after the bye, the Jets averaged 2.1 yards per play. The Colts averaged <laughs> 2.0. So, I mean, it was it was very comparable to me. I actually think that Salah skated a little bit because Zach was so bad. And then he had his comments afterwards that he should have pulled the plug on Zach in that game. I think yeah. if he pulled the plug on Zach in that game, they would have won that game because I think you saw it right away. There's just a different energy. Anybody but Zach Wilson at this point for them. And, and I think had it been Mike White in that game in the third quarter when he probably should have pulled the plug, I think they would have won that game. It wouldn't have come down to the Marcus Jones punt return for a touchdown. Yeah. So, um, you know, they probably sit there internally and say, you know, we had to sort of back our guy because he was the number two pick in the draft. But had he done, had he been competent or we had we made the change, we're probably nine and two, you know, or, or whatever the record is now. Like there are two more wins. Yeah. They should have beat the Patriots yeah. both times. Right. I, I saw those two teams and the Jets are – a more talented team than the Patriots. You've covered some awesome games this year, Mike. <laughs> I, you know, hopefully, ho hopefully, um, you know, I, so I just saw Philly put up 35 on the Titans and I'm thinking maybe like, maybe that was my boost. I got a little kick yeah. here. They are, now I'm going to get some points. Cause I've seen a lot of games where offenses were very challenged and points were at a premium. Yes. Gotcha. So you've been the under seeker in the, yes. <laughs> in a lot of your games. For sure. Um, Speaking of, you know, just solid defenses, I think this Jets defense is incredible. Um, do they think they're like this defense is good enough to win with Mike White, correct? Like they yes. maybe they had won enough games even with Zach Wilson, but this defense, I don't think maybe gets enough credit because of the maybe the Zach Wilson story is kind of clouded over just how good they've been. For sure. And I mean, you start looking at if you just go talent to talent, like from position to position. Quinn and Williams is playing like one of the best players in the league, best players, not best at his position, but one of the best players. Um, I think he's had one game that was sort of subpar, but by and large, he dominates each and every week. Um, they're, they're getting contributions from guys like Bryce Huff. You say, who was Bryce Huff? Well, he gets like 10 snaps a game and he ends up pressuring the quarterback on like four of those snaps. So wow. it's just like yeah. proper use of a guy. They're constantly rotating bodies up front and, and they're getting production out of a bunch of different players up front. And then obviously, to have Sauce Gardner, who, you know, pretty much right away walked in the league, it was a top 10 corner. And now top five, top three, like he's just playing at that kind of level, scares teams. They don't want to go that direction. But yeah. then the good news for them is, you know, they went and spent money on DJ Reed in the offseason. People are like, he's good, but he's not great. Well, he's played pretty awesome on the other side. So, yeah. so they've had that, the good quarter, uh, cornerback combo. And then you get the pass rush and you're putting teams in, in bad positions. You know, again, to sort of speak to, you know, Apple's you're comparing the teams here, the Patriots lit up the Vikings on yeah. that Thanksgiving game. Jones threw for over 300 yards. They moved the ball pretty well. Uh, you know, the overturned touchdown, all these different things. Kirk Cousins looked like crap against the Jets. Like yeah. there was there were a couple times yeah. where they, they cut over to the sideline and you got – you got Kevin O'Connell going like, what are we doing? You know, so the pass he missed to Hawkinson was bad. Yes, very, very bad. So um, they've made teams look ugly at times yeah. and not just the bad teams. They made good teams look ugly. They they made the Bills look ugly yeah. in that game earlier. So, uh, yeah, I think they're they're definitely they're a top five defense and there are weeks where they flirt with being the best defense. Yeah, it's funny. You talked about Quinn and Williams. That was literally my next question to say, is he the best 
defensive tackle in football slash defensive player. I know he got nicked up at the end of last game. Is he all yeah. all clear? Uh, well, I mean, we'll get a better idea of that now as the week goes on, right? Yeah, but we're recording that, this on Tuesday. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, practice Wednesday will probably be a big tell for us about how he is. Sal is generally pretty open about the injuries, like, you know, not, not specifically saying, hey, he's got a sprained MCL or whatever, but generally pretty open about that stuff and and gives you kind of a good feel of how guys so are headed Sean during McDermott? the course of the week. Is, is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's not the day-to-day, week-to-week. He's You know, nobody does, nobody does it better than Tomlin. Like Tomlin comes and starts every press conference with like, this is the lit. lit. So we got, you know, Najee has a uh, sprained toe. We're probably looking at one to two weeks. Uh, you know, uh, Kenny got his ribs cracked. Uh, that's a bit, you know, like he'll, he'll just give you, he's having a hard time breathing right now. Like he, he yeah. kind of gives you that, that. And meanwhile, there's other teams. It's like, you can't even, God doesn't practice all week. It's a vet rest day. Then he doesn't play on. So, oh yeah, he's uh, he broke his leg, and you're just finding that out now. <laughs> I know we get off on a tangent here, but did you see the Tomlin video of him in the tunnel with the guy? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm win. Let's go for the win, man. man. I know. It was so good. Uh, he's he. You know, he's fun. I I, I enjoy the times I get to be around him because he's just he's interesting, and he, he has an ability to turn a phrase. Yeah, like his press conferences, there's always one or two things that are just pure gold from a just a phraseology standpoint. You're like, how did he think of that? Standard how did he come out? Standard. And then the way he delivers it, yeah, yeah he, he's got he's got it down. So, um, but to, back to the point about Williams, like, look, there's some good defensive tackles in the league. Chris Jones has played at a high level this year. Obviously, we know what Aaron Donald usually is, although obviously it's a bit of a down year for that right. team entirely, and and now he's hurt which for the first time ever, but when Williams has certainly been in the conversation as being one of those guys, it's really hard to block um, consistently. And when you have someone like that on the interior that requires two bodies, you know, yeah. it, again, it, it allows someone like, as I said, Bryce Huff yeah. to be singled up on maybe a right tackle. And he's got a little bit more juice than that guy. And the next thing you know, Bryce Huff is ruining a game. So um, he's just been massive for them. That, that whole build, of that defense, you know, last year they were one of the worst defenses in the league, bottom yeah. three, I think, and they had to the blitz. They were, I don't know if they were the top blitzing team or the second highest. And that's yeah. you're like, Sal is a defensive coach. This is not how he played in San Francisco. Well, yeah. now he's playing like he wants to. Rotation on the defensive line. He's got the real corners, and now they're they're just a they're a nasty team. And uh, you know, C.J. Mosley in the middle too is still playing at a really high level. Yeah, um, you, you talked about Garrett Wilson before. Is he? If you're not an Ohio State fan or a Jets fan, do you not appreciate or know how good this guy really is? Yeah, and it's funny. I, I was joking with Leslie. I said he's on a heater right now. Like since yeah. Mike White got back in the lineup, it's like just target him as much as possible. And he, he he does such a good job after catch as well, you know, breaking tackles and whatnot. Like he yeah. is – they have some good playmakers on that offense, but I think he is the premier playmaker on that offense. And – He's just another one of these rookie receivers that has come in, right? And is and like you're like yeah. instantly you're like this guy's a dude, like he's a real alpha receiver, uh, which is massive because like again talking about the build on defense, it's the same thing on offense. They did everything they could this off season to give Zach yeah. as many answers as possible. Drafting Wilson ten, trading up and getting Brees Hall, who was playing awesome before he tore out the uh, the ACL yeah. um, last year was a. Vera Tucker, who was playing at a Pro Bowl level before he got hurt for the and lost for the season. They added the two tight ends that are both good players, Uzama and Conklin. Like they yeah. gave him all kinds of pieces. He's to do it. He could, yeah, he couldn't get it done. But now the other guy has at least made those guys all viable uh, and sort of unlocked their potential. Yeah, I think it's unfair because I really think Garrett Wilson has had an an exceptional start to his career. But it's like, well, you have Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. It's like, well, those yeah. guys were absolute freaks that like not every rookie wide receiver should be held to that standard. Like, Oh, somebody's supposed to come in and break all the records of the previous guy and watching it. I always remember too, Orlovsky broke down a, a clip about like Garrett Wilson was so upset with some of Zach Wilson's throws that like, here's a rookie that wants the ball is it, it, doing it in a productive way, but he seems to have that intensity to go along with the talent. Well, I mean, I go back to after the Patriots game, which was the final straw for Zach he talked to us for five or six minutes in the locker room and you know, he, he didn't throw Zach out in front of the bus, but you know, he, he chose his words carefully, but I yeah. mean, it was clear. It was just like, you know, we got guys out here. You got, you got to give us an opportunity to make plays. Sometimes, you know, 
all we need is a little step or, hey, we're covered, but it's a 50-50 ball. Let us go make a play. We got guys. And he's he's clearly capable yeah. and, is, and has made a big difference for their offense, looking a lot more explosive here over the last couple of weeks. All right, two questions before I let you go. I know you're busy. Um, Bill's perspective on this, because obviously you've also been around this team the last few years. I have said this whole year has felt different offensively. Nothing has really come easy. I know they're nine and three. And if you look at the box scores, all the stats are fine. But from what you're hearing around the league and your perspective, do defenses still fear what this offense is and can be, if that makes sense? Absolutely. I think they do because of Josh, right? And look, whether, you know, we're probably never going to know the full extent of the injury until after it's all over. But I think obviously some of the the numbers point have pointed down since the injury. Um, and I look at him sometimes and I say, you remember the first six weeks of the season, his, he was taking the check downs. He was taking those easy yep. throws and he was hitting it out. Like everybody's oh, they're easy throws, but like, hey, sometimes guys are covered, but you're just taking the five yard throw instead of forcing it 25 yards down the field and putting so it Brady up. Brady did for two decades. Exactly. But he was hitting it at an absurd rate. It was like yeah. 88%. It was some, some ungodly number. And you're like, boy, he's just, it's another step for him, right? Just like I'm willing to be patient and take that. And then I think one of the things that I've noticed since the elbow injury is on some of that short stuff, I don't feel like he has the best control. And I don't know if that's the hand, the elbow is numb, the a finger is numb. Like, is there something going on there? Yeah. You know, I, I have no idea, but I, I do feel like that's been a factor for him. Um, and the other thing I'll tell you is, and it's, no one wants to hear it because everybody looks at the skill guys, but like their offensive line has, has not performed great. I thought they were a better group last year than they are this year. There's been plenty of injuries uh, which have contributed to that, but like Saffold hasn't been, he hasn't been awesome. Uh, and look, when they made the signing, I liked the signing cause he's a, yeah. he's, he's seen it all, but he's, he's at this point in his career, he wasn't, he, he's not a good pass blocker. Like he's not, that's not what he does, but you're a throwing football team. Uh, I mean, that's still your bread and butter, even though you're, you know, you've run the ball better over the last whatever, however many weeks you want to talk about. So to me, like, that's a curious fit. Dawkins has been in and out of the lineup. Spencer yeah. Brown's been up and down as well. Like, so who have you counted on? I mean, Mitch Mitch has been their best player and he he's had some injury issues. Yep. So like, to me, that's where it all starts. Because I think even the best quarterbacks, when protection starts to break down early and often, then I do think you get into some bad habits, or I do think you try to be Superman even more than when you're Josh Allen. Yeah. And then you end up forcing a couple throws that you just, you go, oh man, I can't believe he made that throw. Like, I thought we got rid of that. Well, look, when you're getting hit or when you're running for your life a lot, yeah. I, I think it just skews your brain. So I think that's, to me, that's part of it. Can they solidify that group? You know, can Dion get back and be a good left tackle again? Can Saffold at least do a better job holding the fort? If you keep Mitch in the lineup, and, and elevate Spencer's play, then then you should be there. But like again, here we are in December now, and we're these are things that we've been talking about now for 12, 13 weeks. So maybe they just are what they are this year, and maybe this is the way it's gonna be. And Josh and Ken Dorsey and everybody else are gonna have to figure out a way to overcome some of the deficiencies up front. Yeah, that that's been my big gripe this year is that I was my fear was you're giving the keys to the Ferrari that is the Bills offense to a a first time play caller, a guy that has his learner's permit. And I think that he has struggled at times to make the adjustments, especially in the second half. I mean, Brian Dable, we always joke around about how much I love the guy, but like he had 10 to 15 plays in my opinion that could always settle Josh in. And I think even I was watching the Amazon and Fitzpatrick is sitting down with Josh and Josh even says like, yeah, we're still working on some things like about Dorsey. And it's like, yeah. Oh, okay, like the whole reason I thought he was here was because it was, con- you know, continuity. And it's like, well, when you're calling plays, it's it, it's tricky. Yeah, there's a so. different – well, just think about this too. Like, um, I remember Dayball and Josh coming into New England. I think it was 2018. It ended up being a close game. Allen drove him down the field late. late. It was a, I think it was a turnover. Yeah, Whatever. turnover it was a, on downs. Turnover on downs, but, I think, late. But do you remember the first half, Josh did not look good at all. And I remember actually sort of being irritated with Dayball watching the game going, he he didn't give him some easy completions early. Like get the, because he's still, this is jo- Josh before he became Josh, yeah. right? So like, 
I'm always a, a proponent of giving the younger quarterback some confidence early. Like, hey, Please. little little stop, a, a slant, little whatever, something simple, even like little flares to the backs out of the backfield. Just hey, I've hit my first three throws. Like, you can breathe now. Everything's cool. And in that game, I felt like in the first half he didn't call a good game. Then the second half they settled in, and Josh started to get some thing going, and they, and they made it a a ball game against the team that ended up winning the Super Bowl. So. Um, John Brown had a touch, the long touchdown yes. in that game too. For yeah, on uh, Stephon Gil- Gilmore, which, Gilmore, yeah, yeah. Which, which never happened that year. Um, so, I, <laughs> but I look at those things sometimes, and I say, like, Dable had been doing it for a long time. He's and, seen it, and and he had Josh. He broke in Josh from the beginning, right? So, yeah. like, there was a definite. I mean, there's a love and affection there. They're friends, but like, Dable was the boss of him. And now Ken's the quarterbacks coach. The quarterback coach tends to be a little bit closer to the player, right? Now. You're like, oh, you know, Dayball, sometimes he gets a little cranked up, like, but you're doing a good job. You're fine. And now you're back into this new, now you're in this new role where they, where it's, you know, it's the same thing. You see like great coordinator becomes a head coach and can't handle it. I think Ken's done a fine job. I think he's had obviously Agreed. better moments than others in, in certain games. Um, but I think it is, it's a learning process for him. And it's a relationship thing where maybe that's as much as what Josh is talking about as anything yeah. Just like, how do we redefine this relationship and right. how do you make it work? And I'll, I'll throw one more thing in there, one more log on the fire. And we saw it a couple of times during Dable's tenure and certainly the back half of last year where I think Sean and Brian were definitely at loggerheads, right? Um, yep. About running the football. Yep. And Dabes had been around so long and knew what his currency was, that he was going to be a head coach that I'm sure there was a little bit more fighting and a little bit more screw you. I'm going to call the pass play because that gives us our best chance to win. Dorse is in his first year doing this. I wonder if Sean has some more influence just based on. Sure. It's a first year play caller. I've been doing this. You work for me. Yep. And you're probably going to be a head coach too, probably sooner rather than later, but like you don't have the same cachet that, <clears throat> that, that Brian had. Yeah. I, I always, it's a great point. Just going back to this and I'll let you go. Just the fact of when you said like Dable, I always felt like, Especially, it's, I mean, it's different roles. Like you said, Dable was like the parent. And when your parent could yell at you yep. and Dorsey was your friend, he was your buddy. Hey, it's okay. Don't, don't yep. worry. D- Dave's a little crazy. Don't worry about it. And now all of a sudden Dorsey has to be that guy that says to try and wrangle in Josh at times and pulling the reins. And Josh is like, oh, you're my buddy. What do you mean? I like, I, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. don't, don't, you can't yell at me. That, that's right. not how it's it, supposed it, to go. Yeah. And that, and look, that's just, that's human nature. And that's human we, nature, right? That's beyond football. It's just a relationship. Plus we talk about like, you know, Josh isn't 35 years old, right? No. Like, I mean, he's been in the league for a while now, but what's he 26, 27 years old? Like he's still a, a kid, if you will, like yeah. in, in general terms. Um, so yeah. And, and he obviously, and, and Doris did, I thought an awesome job explaining sort of the, the, the ridiculous touchdown pass to Gabe Davis and cracking that, you know, had, had that been me, I'd have been sacked five times before that ball even got off. But like the, the, he, 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 he's capable of making special plays and there's that fine balance. And yeah. I don't really know how you reel that in. Like, I think some these guys, like you even see Mahomes. there's always a, yep. a throw a week from Mahomes. You're like, what the hell were you doing? It's but like, you're you like, bored. I'm invincible. I, I make all these plays happen. Yep. Yeah, like it's almost like they get bored following the script. And it's yep. like, oh, you tell me to throw to this guy? No, nah, I don't really want to. I'm going to I'm gonna throw this guy. Yep. Watch this. And yep. so yeah, it'll be fun. Um, I appreciate it. You will be there at Buffalo on Sunday. So will I. So we will catch up there as well. But again, Mike, recurring guest, Buffalo Plus, big fan. Uh, we're a big fan of yours. Sure. So I appreciate it. Taking some time. I'll see you on Sunday. Maybe. I didn't get the dress code memo though. Look at me. I'm all, you know, my, yeah, you're, you're look way too classy for Buffalo plus. Man. <laughs> no, we just, you know, we're just trying to bring a different, different look, a different view. The last time I remember the first time we talked, I knew you were coming off of doing hits uh, for the NFL network. And I did the hoodie and the sport coat. And I, <laughs> now I, this look at our friendship. Now it's just more casual for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You're just relaxed around me. It's all good. That, that's it. I appreciate it so much, man. Again, be Thanks, sure to man. like, comment, and subscribe to Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Thanks again, Mike. Thank you.